So welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Chris and Kevin from Ayrshire College, who's going to give us a bit of an art attack. I mean, I'm excited. So without further ado, over to you, Chris. Hi, uh, thanks very much for, for having me here. This is, um, I've never done anything like this before. So this is quite exciting for me. But, um, well, basically the, the story um, as an introduction is that because of the, it all started from, well, two things, um, the coronavirus, um, which is not a good thing, um, and the college sort of summer developers project um, led by Kevin, um, which was a good thing. Uh, and the two things have kind of come together. Um, what, what we do is basically, I, I teach a lot of life drawing um, within Ayrshire College. And what I, what I historically always did was I would do demonstrations and I would get students to stand around me as I was doing it. And obviously that's not allowed. And as one who's always kind of shied away from technology a little bit, um, especially in kind of fine art areas like drawing, um, I'm lucky enough to be from a department that do kind of force technology on you a little bit. Um, and basically my, my line manager electrified my life drawing room for the first time ever um, with a camera and a projector. And it doesn't sound particularly impressive, but to me, this was a, a bit of a revelation. Um, and basically what this allowed me to do was to demonstrate for students at a distance. And then we realized that it was also recording videos onto an SD card that I could take home and make tutorial videos with. And I learned how to use the platform for that through Kevin's um, sort of summer uh, developers program. Um, and, and the two things kind of came together to form a kind of process that is, is, is new to, to me, but has kind of benefited what, what we do. Um, so basically we're kind of finding a balance between social distancing and, and learning from home, not to replace the kind of fine art values of life drawing, but to kind of enhance them with some supplementary work that students can do from home. And that is kind of the, um, the sort of emphasis uh, of, of the videos that, that we've been making. Um, and um, so it's a, it's a kind of partnership thing between my area and the college um, and, uh, and some of the technology and the media that we've got access to there. And also through what we've learned from the digital integration um, team in the college led by uh, Kevin. Would you say that's a kind of fair enough intro, Kevin? Um, yeah, pretty much. Um, just for anyone um, who's maybe a bit confused by what Chris was talking about with the Summers Developers Programme, um, basically we, we asked um, lecturers to volunteer, um, basically to give up some of their own time over the kind of summer holiday period, just to sit down and work with us um, and have discussions about how they could move some of their content to a much more online format. So um, each um, lecturer would be assigned um, a specific learning technologist, um, and we would have regular meetings with them, come up with ideas, do we wee, wee bits of training and, and just really be there in the background just to encourage them and, and to, to help them out as they went along. But um, to be honest, this is all about Chris. It's not about me. So I'm, I'm going to um, go back to Chris and you can talk about the rest of your journey. Thanks, Kevin. That's very kind of you. But, but uh, no, I, I think it, it definitely comes from um, certain aspects of the college working um, well together. Um, and I suppose technology kind of finding its way into less likely areas like life drawing. And as I said earlier, we, we weren't trying to uh, replace studio-based life drawing with something that students can cobble together at home. We were just trying to get them to practice the basics at home and we were using technology to kind of foster that. So my demonstrations and workshops in the, in the college were kind of going home with them for them to try through their sketchbooks and kind of enhance their portfolio that way. Perhaps finding um, figures to look at from other sources just for practice. Um, whether that's maybe using themselves or the family members, or we, we suggested using ClickView to kind of pause um, models and pose, um, taking motion studies, for example, from um, ballet or sport footage and things like that, and just sort of finding um, sort of maybe alternative ways of, of practicing the kind of values of, of life drawing, not, not to replace studio-based um, practice, but just to kind of enhance it. And I think one of the things that we've found through through doing that is that students very quickly accrue a greater degree of confidence and a, a greater degree of um, awareness of the anatomy, awareness of proportions, awareness of perspective, and they're they're starting just slightly further along the line than perhaps we've seen in in the past. So it, we're we're starting to see a little bit of um, of some some progress, some some good results be, because of it, um, and uh, and so far 
we've we've made um, five, five or six specific tutorial videos, but we've also made briefing videos and introductory videos and things like that as well. And and the feedback from students has been has been really really positive. And I, I'm saying all this. I, I don't want you to think that I think this is some kind of um, revelatory innovation. It's not. I mean, we've ha we've had videos for a long time. I'm I'm talking about it just because it's 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 new to me. Um, and you might you might be thinking. <laughs> How can video be new to anybody? Um, but I think the way that we've applied it um, is, is has certainly been new um, for us and for our for our students, and um, and they've they've been speaking quite highly about it. They've they've seen some positive impact from it, and I think at the at, at the very least they've enjoyed um, engaging with the videos at home and bringing those sort of self developed skills um, back to the college and making even more of the life drawing sessions than they might have done in previous years. So all, all in all, it's been a really sort of positive experience. Um, do you, would, would now be a time to, to show an example or? or a... Yep. Um, now what I'll do is, is I'll do some of the technical things and, and actually take people through um, some of the videos that you've actually created. Um, but one of the things I just kind of wanted to kind of mention was it was just that kind of whole process, that conversation we initially had um, with you, Chris, and it just um, almost, you know, thinking about that whole idea of, of moving something you previously thought of as, a, as a, only an analog subject onto yeah. a kind of digital format and, and, and just actually sitting down and just actually going, actually, this could work. And the fact that you were, you were willing to kind of take that risk, um, and 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 we got there and we tried it. And I'm not even going to mention the fact that my first suggestion was that we put a 360 degree camera in the middle of your studio with a new model and live stream it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we had to kind of find other ways around about that. But um, what I'm going to do now is actually just going to kind of share just my screen and and let you see some examples of the videos that, that Chris has created. Um, so just bear with me while I do this. Um, so I'm hoping you can all see this all right, um, but um, we've got a video here, it's on our Microsoft Hello. stream Welcome platform. Welcome to the replay clip for day two of Life Drawing. We're going to be looking at gesture drawing using positive and negative shape. So what I'm going to get you to do at first is using the chalk um, on its side, we're going to make very, very quick sketches and then we're going to block out some of the positive and negative shapes. We're going to try it different ways. So some drawings will emphasise the positive shape, that's Katie, and in other drawings will emphasise the negative shape, that's the stuff around Katie. Emotionally. <laughs> First, let's look at how we can use the negative space, that's the surrounding or unoccupied area, to emphasise the figure. Use loose, confident gestural line to record the dramatic stance of the figure. Don't be afraid to exaggerate here. Now, I'll stop that just now because uh, one of the things I, I, I kind of like to mention about that one, this is one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of show this as an example was, I mean, that, that was a video that Chris recorded in a live classroom situation with the students there. Um, I, and then he's very quickly taken it, given it a wee bit of polish and uploaded it onto the stream platform for students to access. And I think for me, that's one of the really important things is that, uh, you know, we could spend a lot of time editing these videos, but that wouldn't really be any use if the students were having to wait um, a long time to then get access to them. So we've, we've, we've really, we've got a really um, quick turnaround, but at the same time we've managed to make the videos look really, really good and, and really professional. Um, so that's like one example of the kind of videos that we've got here. And, and as you can see, we've been using the stream platform to host them. Um, now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and just go back and just see if anyone um, has got any kind of comments or anything about what we've kind of um, shown there just now. I see Corey. Hi. Hi, thanks. The yeah, video looks great. Really, really good. Um, I like that you used vi uh, music in the background. That's a really interesting way. Um, so I'm from Glasgow School of Art. And so we have been, um, videos of making is a big, uh, issue for us right now, as you can imagine. Um, just first of all, you, you're using Microsoft Stream. Do you, did you use Microsoft for your subtitling or what did you use a different tool? Um, yeah, Microsoft Stream creates the auto transcripts, Corey. Um, I, and then um, Chris is actually a really, really good example because um, his um, transcripts have actually been really, really accurate from mm -hmm. the, the start. So there's been very little editing needed to be, to be made. But one of the, the good things we use in Microsoft Stream is that we can quickly go into the video and, and edit the transcripts for accuracy um, after it anyway. Um, so that's one of the reasons why we picked that as a platform to, to host these. I wonder if, do you know if that's the Azure 
tool that's being used for that? Um, yes, it is. It is. Okay. And you found, so the Glaswegian accent is pretty good? Um, it's, it's certainly more accurate with Chris than it is with me. I, I, I did a little bit of um, tweaking and typing and stuff, Corey, to, to get my message across accurately. Um, it, it did come up with some quite funny ideas about what it thought I was saying at first. Yeah, I know. And we we, we have foreign <laughs> instructors that it's just a butchery when they try and use. We, we currently use Otter. That's the one that we found works the best. But the workflow is terrible because you have to upload your video separately and then download the file the transcript and the subtitle file and then upload them together to our streaming platform and so we're just looking for different ways to do that i found the, the editing the the captions in uh, stream quite intuitive it's fairly easy and quick um mm -hmm. you, you do have to you do have to read have a wee read through and make sure it's not written something mad and but when when you when you find that and to, to correct it is i found it fairly straightforward and quick I wonder, this is for you, Chris, but also for anyone else on the uh, that's attending. Um, do you have an institutional policy or guidance that says that auto transcripts that are unedited are acceptable use? Or is there not, is that just sort of not quite decided yet? We, we have accessibility guideline, guidelines for the college, Corey. Um, and so basically what we are saying to members of staff is that um, any video that's being created from this point onwards and is uploaded has to have at least... Um, a transcript that's that's followable doesn't need to be 100 percent accurate but you know right. it, needs, it needs to be kind of followable so again this is why we're, we're um, mm -hmm. using stream as we're working on the main platform just to kind of make mm -hmm. that a bit a bit easier for us yeah and followable will be that will require editing for some people certainly yeah, yeah. i get that okay thank you very much um so if, if no one else has got any other questions about the video i showed what i'd like to actually maybe just do is actually kind of show you how how it all kind of works together because um as i kind of mentioned we we did talk um about the platform being stream uh, that we would use for actually hosting the videos but another reason that we, we did that was because we were looking at that point of integrating um a lot of our different um services so we're basically putting together our moodle site our microsoft team site and stream um, basically uh, as one brand, which we as a college decided we would call kind of my learning. Um, so if it's okay with yourselves, what we'll do is another week kind of screen share and I'll kind of show you how the different things all work together um, in terms of creating a kind of coherent course um, there for, for um, Chris's students. Um, so I'll just do another wee screen share here. Um, so first of all, you can see that this is at sitting within the stream platform, but if you actually see it within um, our Moodle, which we kind of branded as My Learning, um, we're sitting here within this kind of course here, um, with the videos um, actually sitting. Um, let me just go here. And there, so those links would take students directly to the videos within Stream. But the other bit of the kind of the thing we've actually got running is the integration with Microsoft Teams. So I'm going to stop sharing this screen and do a new share with you, um, which will just let you see it from this point of view. And basically what we now have is this integration here um, with Microsoft um, Teams. So from the, the Moodle course, um, all the students and, and all the content um, is now available through Microsoft Teams. You can see we've got his team set up for art and design, um, the channels for his life drawn. And you can see Chris is really active in terms of making sure the students are always informed of what's happening and they've always got tasks to do. Um, but also within here, um, we have um, the My Learning and Moodle site is actually embedded um, so students can access it all from one place. But we've also managed to um, set up a, a separate um, tab here um, where we've actually got all the videos um, accessible there within that as well. So again, we're not having to send the students um, through to lots of different um, areas. And um, basically all they need to ever do is access the team. Um, and from there they can access um, the assessments, um, which are going to be available on the My Learning platform, but they've got access here as well to, to the full range of videos. So again, all we wanted to try and do is make that whole process for the students um, as simple as possible. Um, and I'll stop sharing that and just going to see again if anyone has got any kind of questions about how we had set that up.
no question. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back across to Chris because Chris is actually probably much better talking about the effect this has actually had on the students um, than me because I, I say I tend to deal much more with the technical side of things. Yeah, well, we, we've been um, asking uh, students um, quite a bit recently how they've found, because they're, I suppose, the kind of guinea pigs in, in, in this little, this new dimension that we've kind of brought to life drawing um, we've been quite attentive to asking how they're finding it and whether it's of use um, it's I mean it, it's also it's quite a lot of work for us to kind of embark on um, and we'd like to know that it's um, I suppose that it's of, of value and, and not just something that we're doing to you know for the sake of looking for a kind of a, a kind of technical innovation so we've, we've been talking to students quite a bit um, on how they've they've benefited from it and the kind of overwhelming um view of uh, our students is that um basically life drawing is something that they value immensely in fact for many of them it's their, their favorite aspect of the course I, I can't tell you how lucky i am to work um where i work and, and with the people i work with because life drawing is, is valued at Ayrshire college despite the uh, you know, despite the, the, the drawing resources that it must be. Um, but we, we do a lot of life drawing. We do it with six years locally. Um, we do it with our NC class. We do it with our HNC class. We do it with our HNC, HND class. Um, so it's a big, big part of our course. It's a big part of the portfolios that we make um, for art school. And the college was very understanding of me not wanting to shortchange students through the coronavirus situation with their access to, to life drawing. Um, so we've um we've cut groups into small bubbles and we've tried to give a fair amount of access to the life model to, to each group and we've tried to supplement that activity with what they can do at home um so we've given them a studio brief and a home brief in life drawing and the home brief basically directs them to the video tutorials and allows them to develop their practice in life drawing through their sketchbooks and their portfolio pieces from home um, in particular looking at things like gesture looking at the kind of quicker more spontaneous um, studies of, of um, interesting poses that can be picked up or found from a range of different references and, and sources and the feedback from students is that this has been really really helpful in increasing their confidence and increasing their um, their ability to really make the most of the studio time. I mean, I, I stress again, it was never intended to be um, a replacement or an alternative because the, the college really, really values what life drawing is and in its purest form as well, which is a, a life model in a room with a group of students. And, and so we're always, we're always going to do that. This was just a way of perhaps enhancing um, and supplementing that activity with things that they can do from home. And the feedback's been, been really, really positive. Um, Kevin, would you be able to play the little, the, the little clip of the, the students speaking about it? Um, yeah, I'll just load this up just now. Thank you. I found it really helpful to have a video by you, particularly, because we know you, we know the way that you work, you know us, and it's more comfortable. Uh, it's almost like being in class. Yeah, I, I agree, Kelly. Um, all of our class feel exactly the same, that the videos are extremely helpful because when you're in the studio with yourself, it's really quick. It's, the time's precious and you're just getting on with the job. Sometimes it's nice to sort of look back and then take what you've said, Chris, and when we're working at home in the life drawn as you've asked, it's more difficult. But looking back at your videos just reminds us of things that maybe you would have forgotten about. So it's really, really useful to take that studio time and bring it into your own home a little bit. Um, I think it's really comforting as well, like because we can watch um, Life Drawn on YouTube by other tutors and lecturers, but uh -huh. to have like you be the presence that's actually teaching us through the video. Uh -huh. Also, go back and keep watching parts again and again if you want to, which is it's invaluable, really. You, can, you can't do that actually in the studio. Absolutely, yes. I don't Absolutely. think it will ever replace the actual being there for life, but there's yeah. definitely a place there to reinforce points or if yeah. someone's been absent from it and wants to catch up. So definitely okay. got a place, Chris, definitely. The the delivery system of the lesson, like the dynamics have completely changed now that you've got this other way to keep us going from inside our machinery. It's, it is fun as well though, Chris, because you just, you do put it forward in a really, a dynamic way, fresh. 
Um, so I'm going to stop sharing that just now. But um, for anyone who wants to kind of view that video um, away from this meeting, um, I will um, give Kenji a link um, that will actually allow you to um, to, to view that video uh, in your own time. So there's some really great feedback coming there from the students. Um, one of the things that, um, that at the very end of the video that I really picked up on when I, when I saw this video for the first time, Chris, was that the students started giving you advice about how you can make your videos better. Yeah, and, and I'm really grateful to them for doing that, actually, because I my, my, my projection thing's behind me, so I, I can't always see if I'm doing something stupid like standing in front of the camera and giving them a really, really good view of my jumper, um, which I do all the time, apparently. So there you go. Um, so if they're not actually seeing what I'm doing live, then I suppose I can edit the video and, and, and give them the kind of recap that they might have missed. Um, but yeah, I'm getting lots of suggestions of to wear a camera, um, with to have a drone going around the room. There's lots of things that we're going to look into to kind of evolve evolve the idea um but it just is, it does go to show that they're they're engaging in it they're, they're buying into it they're, they're coming up with ideas as to how it can be better um i mean i'm probably not the only one in thinking this but i'm i'm technologically behind i, I know i'm technologically behind um I'm, I'm really grateful to kevin um he's taught me and, and coached me through using uh, stream and my learning and teams and I feel like my practice as a, as a teacher as a lecturer has has evolved massively um, through that from a place as I say um, of, of someone who was probably hiding behind his subject a little bit um, and this has been a really really good um, point in, in I suppose my, my career to kind of evolve things a little bit but nobody knows technology like students do um, it's I suppose it's their language, it's their it's their visual culture in a way now, and and um, so these little suggestions that they've got um, are are definitely going to inform um, developments and improvements and evolutions that we can continue to put in place. Um, because we're, I, I, I do sometimes think when, when when you make a little video tutorial for stream, um, that's going to be watched by people who watch a lot of things on YouTube and 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 know how things how how things work for them, know what they like. Um, know how things should look on a, on a streaming platform. Um, so there's been a wee bit of research kind of behind the scenes into, into good ways of editing these videos, good ways of soundtracking the videos and, and doing voiceovers and things like that. Um, but input from students has been very integral to that um, because as I say, they, they have an active interest in, in using these platforms and in, in, in watching videos. It's, it's, it's part of the scenery now. Um, so, I didn't want to um, kind of move into that space and 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 get it wrong. I'm 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 trying to feed off what what they have to say about it, um, and they've been very very positive about it. But I think that's because they can see their input being reflected in, in what we're doing, and that's really really important to me. Um, so yeah, the, the student feedback is going to be really important um, in how the videos are made, but also how we'd maybe do things in future to, to sort of improve things. But one of them also, Kevin, just to, to go back to what you said about suggestions being made by students, they wanted to know, one in particular wanted to know if I was enjoying it, um, which I've never been asked before by, <laughs> by anybody that I work with. Are you, are you enjoying this? Uh, and, uh, and, and my answer is yes, definitely, because it's, um, it's a new landscape for, 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 for me to be in. Um, that won't be the case for everybody. Loads of people are expert in this kind of stuff, and I'm not. Um, but I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. And, you know, I, I know I keep saying that I'm, I'm very lucky to work with who I work with. Um, but uh, Johnny, my, my line manager, um, in about 15 minutes, rigged up the room with the, the camera and the projector and that kind of thing. And, um, you know, he... I keep saying he was actually quite appalled by me because I was so amazed by what he did. You know, his point was, we've had this technology for 10 years and you've not used it, you know, um, and he's definitely got a point. Um, but I'm, but I'm, I'm, I'm definitely, I've, I've kind of seen, um, seen a way through it now and a, and, and a way of, um, of using that, that technology and, and hopefully starting up, starting from a point where it can even be built on and improved so that we're not always using things that are 10 years old. We'll, we'll, we'll be introducing new things. And as Kevin said, okay, the 360 um, camera with a, with a nude module in the room might not be ideal, but I'm sure there's ways around that. I'm sure there's other things that we can do. And I think one of the things that's been great in what the college have done in the past spell is that the digital integration team, people like Kevin, are very much there now for you to take daft questions to. Um, Kevin's very kind. He always says there aren't daft questions, but I, I know my questions are really quite daft. But um, but they're 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 definitely accessible now. And so um, 
you know, these ideas are coming into your studio space that, of things that could be used. Um, Kim's always making suggestions of things that might work and new things to try, um, whether it's something that can be done right away or, or in a future year of delivery. Um, I, I think the, that, that, that door opening has been a really, really big step, um, both for the college and, and, and for, for lecturers, um, that you don't have to go looking now. Um, the, the advice, the ideas, the, the technology, um, the access comes to you now um, through through the digital integration team at the college. I'm really grateful to them for that. And I know the students are as well. So, um, uh, Kevin, see, just to just to express how simple it is, I don't know if um, you'd be able to show the clip of the studio space. Um, yeah, I'll do that. And I apologize in advance for just how messy this is, um, but it's a working studio. Yeah, yeah. I apologize as well. <laughs> um, let me just see if I can find this one. There we are. So what round of the life room? It was. <laughs> Um, but as you can see, it's, it's not a high tech setup um, that we have there at all. It's really um, it's a, a Sony Handycam that just records straight to SD uh, and then just plugged in through AV up to his projector. Um, so um, you know we've not we've not invested a huge amount of of, of money uh, in terms of of um, the equipment, but we're getting great results for it. And one of the things from conversations that I had with Chris was the fact that um, after he created two or three of these videos, he realised these videos, despite the fact they maybe take a wee bit more time than a normal resource for them to create, they can be used by multiple class groups. Is that right? Yeah, I, I think um, talking to talking to colleagues about it at the very beginning, we, we kind of were thinking along the lines that, well, before I before I had really learned much, and I still haven't learned a lot about editing, as you can probably tell, but um, but from, from the basics that I have learned, um, I've been able to speed up the process quite a bit. Um, I think the first one I made to get three minutes of video that I was happy with took about four hours. And you, you begin to wonder if, if that's a particularly efficient use of your development time, you know. Um, but that's sped up massively now. They're, they're, they're happening more quickly because I'm a little bit more familiar with, with what I'm using. Um, and also, as Kevin says, when you start to think that they, these are um, accessible to um, four different levels of, of students, um, maybe six different classes, um, it's a really, really good, good resource, and, and as I say, I always kind of sort of defer to their their feedback on it as well. They they value it, and and so it's become a, a better a, a better use of my time than than perhaps it was at first. Um, but you're you're right. It's a it's quite a it can be a laborious process at first, um, and uh, it can be quite costly in terms of time. But I think um, with a little bit of um, practice, I've been able to make it more efficient. Just before we finish up for this recorded part of the sessions, I think we have one question from Leslie, um, who might want to unmute and ask herself. Yeah, it was uh, just about the, the second step, I suppose, to the narrative, and that is how do you feed back to students if they're creating life drawings on their sketch pads? Do students then digitise those? take photographs and then make them available to you via an electronic portfolio uh, for you to feed back? Um, yeah, I, I think that's about the size of it, Leslie. Um, I, I, um, what, what we've got is we've got submission um, sort of landing spaces on, on my learning. Um, so we haven't actually crossed such an occasion yet, but the plan is that they'll, they'll upload a kind of e-folio of their folio work and their sketchbook work a little bit like they do when they're applying to art school now. Um, so it's good practice for that process because they're already beginning to accumulate their JPEGs for, for when they send their folios off. Um, and we can review and discuss um, those those e-folios, whether it's a PowerPoint or a, or a PDF um, online. But 
I do also see them a day a week in college too. And so they, they can, I'm, I'm working with them on the folio sheets that we're making in the studio. So they're, they're, they're having that discussion of their work all the time. And in fact, in smaller groups now, um, they're getting probably a lot, a lot more of that. And as much as there's obviously restrictions in place, making me not want to handle their work, making me not want to be as, um, you know, maybe as physical with their sketchbooks as I've been in the past, I can still see things face to face. I can still talk face to face in a in a kind of conversational sense. So that kind of, I suppose, diagnostic kind of feedback still happens in the normal way, um, but come the assessment, it's maybe a slightly slicker, slightly more um, sort of digitized method using um, the, the, my learning platform that Kevin was, was talking about and, and showed us. Um, so that, that is the kind of process for that, that. I'm encouraging them all the time to photograph their work and to begin to compile this kind of portfolio, either as a keynote or a PowerPoint or whatever. Um, and that way they can submit one file um, with their sketchbook work and their, their portfolio work for each stage of their of their project. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this recorded part of the session. So if you're joining us on YouTube, thanks for taking the time to get to this point, and uh, hopefully you'll join us again uh, at some future, perhaps live session. So thanks, Chris. Thanks, Kevin, and everyone else. <laughs> Stay safe. <laughs>